I got a new computer. Well, sort of. It is a old computer, but it's a Dell Inspiron desktop. Now, I do not know much about this desktop besides it works and it has a i5 logo on the front of it. And I'm hoping it's good enough to where I can turn this into a graphics card benchmark computer by the end of this video. This might be a challenge. Now, this Dell Inspiron is a very simple computer. It just has some USB on the front, some USB 3.0 on the back. And on the inside, it is pretty much just a Dell Optiplex, but on a different case. Except the case isn't all that different either. Things to note, it has two RAM slots, it seems to have 8GB of DDR3, dual channel, and also seems to have a Wi-Fi card, which is interesting because not a single one of my computers have ever had a Wi-Fi card in them, besides the laptops. So that is actually a first. So there's two main obvious problems with this computer when it comes to benchmarking graphics cards. Problem number one, I can't really fit all of my graphics cards in it, which, well, how do I benchmark a graphics card if I can't put it in the computer? You can't. Luckily, it looks like with a little bit of rednecking, I might be able to fit a graphics card in here. The other problem is the 300 watt Dell power supply in this computer. It's fine for what it is intended to be used for, which is not having a graphics card installed, but for what I want to do, which is like put a GTX 970 or an RTX 3060 in it, it likely won't be enough. So I will replace the 300 watt one with a 500 watt one, which would be a reasonable amount better because it has more connectors. Also, it has a one terabyte hard drive with Windows 10 already activated, which is quite nice. And it was able to let me see what kind of CPU this has. It has an i5-3450, which is not great, but it should be able to benchmark most graphics cards that I have. Maybe not some higher end ones, but at least the lower end ones, it will do just fine. Since it is a graphics card test bench computer, I want to make sure the Windows install is actually fresh. So I wiped the boot drive and reinstalled Windows 10, and I actually used USB 2.0 USB this time. I normally use a DVD. And actually, it wasn't even that long to install Windows 10. It only took 15 minutes. That is a lot better than some of the other computers I've installed Windows 10 on in the past on this channel, as you might know. So that was a nice surprise. It probably helps that I'm not trying to install and run Windows 10 on 1-2GB to gigabytes of RAM or 1-core CPU. Then I decided to try to game on this without a graphics card just to see what would happen. So I installed Minecraft and tried launching it, and look at that RAM usage. That is the weirdest RAM usage I have ever seen on a computer. Now, Oh, there's one thing. I didn't have, I think it was Fabric API installed, so it was having an absolute fit. Uh, but still though, that is really weird looking. Now, with this CPU being a relatively new, well, okay, a decade old, quad-core CPU, it is somewhat powerful, and it's actually able to do more than I was expecting. It was able to actually do game installs and play back 1080p YouTube, and not have any slowdowns in the absolute slightest. It might have had more slowdowns if I was using a SSD, but I'm not going to be putting an SSD in this because there's not really a reason to for my use. But really though, it is a quite slow. CPU. I was curious how fast the CPU was in a CPU benchmark, so I went over and ran Cinebench R23, and it got a score of 2,541. The score is a little bit lower than I was expecting, but it still is a solid score. The first game up on the list is Minecraft Java 1.18.2 using the OptiFabric and OptiFine mod. The game ran... Eh, I mean, it wasn't good, but it wasn't bad. It was getting around 30 to 40 frames per second. It was using all of the lowest settings besides render distance, which was at 8, fancy leaves, and fancy graphics. Though, the game ran a little bit better if you went over and lowered the resolution down to something that is not 1080p. So it seems the graphics chip does not like Minecraft at 1080p. At least if you want 60 frames per second, that is. Also, I tried to install the Sodium and Iris mod, though the thing is, when I launched the game with those, the game just crashed. It didn't even get to the main menu. So I'm assuming it's got to do something with the Intel HD graphics. Next up is Minecraft Bedrock, and at least on the default settings, it was just barely getting 30 frames per second, again due to the graphics chip. Though, it was actually able to reach 60 frames per second if I turned anti-aliasing all the way down to number 1. Then I tried turning the render distance all the way to 16 chunks instead of the standard 10, and it was running 
they're relatively fine. It was lagging a little bit more, but it was still getting around 45 to 50 frames per second, which is completely playable, just a little bit less smooth than before. Though lowering the game to 720p fixed the frame rate issue completely, and it was running at 60 just fine. The next game up on the list is Roblox Arsenal. The game was set to the absolute lowest settings in Roblox, and also the in-game settings were as well set to the absolute lowest, and the game was getting between 60 and 70 70 frames per second the whole time, though sometimes it did drop down into the mid 50s to low 50s, but it wasn't really noticeable at all, and the game ran perfectly fine. And of course, lowering the resolution would make the frame rate go higher if you wanted a higher frame rate. The next game up on the list is Muck, and it ran at a very smooth but horrible frame rate of 4. Yes, 4, not 40. And the game was also set to the stock settings. And at the lowest settings, still at 1080p, it was getting a lot better frame rate, but still utterly horrible. It was getting double the frame rate. It was getting a whopping 10. So, yeah, let's just lower the resolution now. At 720p, it was getting 18 frames per second. 800 by 600, it was getting around 28 frames per second, rarely hitting 30, so still not very good. 480p, the game was still under 30 frames per second. 300p, the game was getting between 30 and 35 frames per second, which is at least good if you like gaming at 30 frames per second. Still horrible because it's 300p, but at least it's slightly playable. 240p didn't do that much, but make it more blurry. And at 200p, the game finally almost was completely above 30 frames per second the entire time, though sadly it did still drop into the upper 20s occasionally but at least it was staying above 30 about 99.5% of the time. Then I decided to do some upgrades because I am tired of the super slow frame rate. So what I decided to do was I decided to put in the 500 watt power spec power supply that I have sitting around, which should do really good for what I needed to do. Though the thing is I actually nearly, I thought broke the motherboard trying to actually put the 24 pin power in. The reason why is I literally had a pry it together with a screwdriver somehow, like I had to like tap on it with a hammer to get it to go into the motherboard, and also getting the old one out, I as well managed to give myself a blister from trying to pull so hard, so that was somewhat exciting. Now, the reason why I say I almost broke it is because I've actually broke not one, but two motherboards in the past. Both Optiplexes trying to replace the 9-pin power. Nine, no, it, when did they get 9-pin power? I mean, 18-pin, 25 can't talk, 24-pin power. I gotta say, those power connectors are annoyingly hard to get on and off, at least for me. Though the thing is, a power supply won't solve my frame rate issues because, well, it's not a graphics card. So I installed a GTX 750 Ti, which is the fastest graphics card I have that will actually fit inside of this computer computer without having to start ripping things apart. And the gaming performance with the 750Ti was relatively fine, it was just running like a GTX 750Ti, not really anything special or anything. It struggles with high graphically intensive games like Minecraft with shaders or BeamNG Drive. But if you are reasonable with your settings and for example if you're playing Minecraft and you want the game to look nice and you also want it to be able to play at a decent frame rate, you could just go over and play the game at 720p, and you can also go and have the complementary shaders on, and you can get 60 plus frames per second, which is a solid experience. But I am not going to go over all of the benchmarking I have done with the 750Ti. The reason why is because that will be for another video. I just want to see what the limit of the CPU is, and this is not the limit. So I need to put a better graphics card in here, and that requires having to do some quote unquote rednecking or grabbing a drill and drilling out the hard drive cage and getting a PCIe extender so I can plug the graphics card in without going and getting rid of the power button which I kind of need because the power button cable is in the way. Also here's something really unrelated with the video but is related in many different ways, and that is about the drill I am using. The drill I am using is a cheap Black & Decker drill I got several years ago, and I haven't actually used it that much. The reason why is most of the things I need it to do is drill holes, and I actually didn't know you can get drill bits for this. The reason why is most drill bits are rounded on the end, and they go into an actual drill. 
I didn't know they actually had the hex end that you could like put a actual drill bit onto a impact for example or well this isn't an impact but you get the point right so that is actually quite neat I got this recently and it's actually working rather well granted the drill isn't really in the mood to drill holes but you know it works When installing the graphics card, I'm running into a few issues. So remember the PCIe riser I'm using? Well, that is making the graphics card a little bit too tall, so it is hitting the side of the case. Not the side panel, just the side of, well, I don't know, what the side panel sits on, basically. So, I have to actually unbend that to put the graphics card in. But that's not all. It still didn't fit in, so I had to start cutting metal off with wire cutters. Yeah, uh, so there's a lot of metal bending and metal cutting to get a graphics card in here. But eventually, I got it in, and it was rised up so I couldn't actually screw the graphics card in. Not, you know, it's a big graphics card, you want to screw it in. So I used twist ties to tie it in, which I know isn't correct but it works barely then i also use a rubber eraser for extra support and with the gtx 970 in the computer the graphics card does sit at 100 percent almost all the time it does actually drop in some games but in other games it sits at 100 percent like minecraft with the complementary shaders so this is about as high end as you want in this if you're going to be making a video testing the graphics card out so i'm not putting anything faster than a gtx 970 in here i don't even think i'm going to be putting this graphics card in here it also runs incredibly hot because because there is actually almost no airflow for the graphics card. All there is is two outtakes and one intake. The intake is just a hole in the side panel basically and it gets up to around 80 degrees Celsius. I know that's not breaking hot, but if you go and counter in that the fans actually were at 100% the entire time, that is, that, that, that's quite hot. <laughs> oh, it also made the room sound like a hurricane. I gotta say, the graphics card does improve the performance a lot. For example, on Muck, we were getting 4 frames per second in the start of this video, and now it's getting well over 60. And if I turn the settings all the way up to the max, they do drop a little bit below 60, but if I turn like one of them down, the super intensive, then it sits at around 100. So, it is definitely a huge improvement. Beam&G Drive as well had a humongous improvement. I didn't try Beam&G Drive with the Intel H2 graphics, but I, I have in the past, and it got around 2 to 4 frames per second on the lowest settings. Well, now we're getting 100-ish with the highest settings, with dynamic reflections turned off. So yes, this is a very nice gaming experience. But I think that's about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this video, turning this potato in Spiron into something that is is still technically a potato for new games but really good at least for older games if you enjoyed today's video make sure to leave a like that would help the video a ton either way thank you so much for watching and i will see you again next time